Mike Dell's World, number 175. And thanks for downloading this show. Here is Chad Hollister doing a cover of My Best Friend's Girl. You always dancing down the street With your suede blue eyes Chad Hollister from Aerial Publicity and Cyber PR. And that was his cover of My Best Friend's Girlfriend. And this show is, again, sponsored by Leonard Peikoff Podcasts at P-I-E-K-O-F-F dot com. Uh, Leonard Peikoff, uh, Dr. Leonard Peikoff, is recognized as the world's foremost authority on Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. He's created a popular website that features weekly podcasts where he addresses questions and asks that ask blah, 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 that are asked by real people. See, I'll get it figured out. Who are challenged with real problems and are looking for an objectivist opinion. He's his he has a unique ability and credentials to apply objectivism to real life situations based on the understanding of that philosophy, his academic accomplishments, and his experience as a radio talk show host. Uh, here, Leonard Peikoff's practical answers and questions submitted to his website each week using objectivism. Just go over to 
www.pieko.ff.com or just click the banner on the uh, right sidebar of my website. And, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting stuff. I, I would play some. Uh, Tom uh, Wiles, my friend, uh, Trucker Tom, also is uh, advertising for, for Leonard Peikoff's podcast. And, and he uh, he goes in way more depth of uh, explaining what that's all about. And I, I just uh, urge you to go check it out. I, I've subscribed, and uh, and it's uh, it's definitely interesting, definitely uh, worthy. And and uh, you know, check it out. Whether whether you agree or disagree, it's uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. It's uh, Ayn Rand was known as a uh, an atheist, but you know, if you're not an atheist. You know, some of what she says is true, and, and some of what uh, Dr. Peikoff says is true, and, you know, your mileage may vary. So, anyway, it's been a while since I've done a uh, Mike Dell's World. Uh, just basically been busy, busy, busy. I'm not going to make excuses. Uh, just uh, my dance card fills up, and uh, I can only do so much. It's... Uh, it's been crazy, and and that's not what it's supposed to be. I, you know, winter is supposed to be the time when it slows down, but it just hasn't. Uh, you know, we've got the uh, ongoing situation with uh, Kathy's dad, and on top of that, uh, work has actually been busy, which is good. You know, my quote-unquote day job, which is actually at night, uh, we've been busy, and uh, that's been good and bad at the same time keeps me hopping and my uh, my side work stuff has been pretty busy you know working with uh, raw voice and blueberry and and uh, working some of my own side projects i've been working on a video project for uh, almost a month now uh, for a uh, large national company's uh, february meeting so hopefully that'll come to a close here real soon but uh, I, I have a feeling there's going to be at least one or two more rounds of changes. And uh, just, uh, it's keeping me hopping. And and I've got a book to finish, and I want to get it finished by the end of of March. So uh, hopefully things will slow down here uh, after this weekend. Like I said, I'm not holding my breath. This weekend, uh, Kathy and I go down to uh, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit. Detroit's coming back. It's not... Uh, it's not the uh, ghost town that uh, everybody thinks. I mean, there are sections of it that are, but uh, hey, they're working on it. But anyway, we're going down there uh, actually to the town of Novi. And there's a couple of uh, different theories how Novi got its name. It's N-O-V-I is the name of the town. Uh, one of the uh, theories is that it was the sixth train stop out of Detroit. But I don't believe that because Nova ain't that far out uh, from downtown Detroit. Uh, the other theory that I heard was it's the uh, sixth freeway exit out from Detroit. Now that that makes more sense. I don't know. I'm gonna have to research that some more. But anyway, we're gonna be in Nova uh, this weekend. Uh, Kathy, my wife, uh, works for a local resort here in Traverse City that. Uh, it was right on the uh, on Lake Michigan on the uh, West Grand Traverse Bay, and uh, she has to go to wedding shows and stuff. And this is the time of year for uh, th those conferences. And she's talked me into accompanying her this weekend at the Novi show. So uh, I won't actually be uh, participating in the wedding show, but uh, I'll be uh, in Novi. Uh, Probably hanging out at the hotel, catching up on my reading, which would be great. Need to do that. Or maybe catching up on my writing, same thing. But uh, either way, like I said, busy, busy, busy. And I don't believe we got anything going on the next weekend other than uh, there's a, a winter festival going on in Traverse City. So my brother-in-law probably will come up for that, uh, barring any uh, new developments with the uh, father-in-law. So anyway, and uh, well, lots of other things going on. Uh, of course, if you're a, a, a blogger, podcaster, or have anything to do with WordPress, you'll you'll know that uh, WordPress 3.05 came out. Well, I have uh, Mike Dell's world at mikedell.com, uh, all updated. But uh, you know what the heck? 
And I said WTF on my notes here, but uh, what the heck? <laughs> why does uh, why does WordPress need to be updated so damn often? Uh, I guess it's good that they're they're paying attention to it, but uh, it just seems that uh, I've been pushing the update button an awful lot on the WordPress the last uh, two or three months, and you know and the problem is I've got yeah, probably fifteen. WordPress installations I take care of, so I'm going to be spending a fair amount of time screwing around updating WordPress. And then, of course, every time WordPress updates, all the plugins uh, seem to think they need to update. So then I end up with a bunch of plugins I got to update. Of course, uh, we at Blueberry uh, update our Word or our uh, PowerPress plugin a lot, and that's just because it needs it sometimes. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else has been going on in the news. Uh, got a new car. I'll talk about that after the uh, next song. Uh, let's see. Got a new laptop. and not, not that I needed a new laptop. I'm perfectly happy with my MacBook. But uh, this one came unexpectedly and free. I signed up for the, uh, the CR48 pilot program at Google, never expecting to selected for that well anyway uh the other day a new cr48 chrome os laptop showed up and so far it's it's interesting uh, i'm gonna have a full review over at geek of the north.com probably in a couple of days hopefully if, if i can uh, get it together but i'll do a full review over there but uh, initial impressions is that you know hardware wise it's it's about half the thickness of a white MacBook. Screen size is slightly smaller, but uh, you know you wouldn't really know the difference. It's supposedly a 12-inch laptop, and the MacBook's a 13-inch, but you wouldn't hardly know the difference. Uh, the uh, keyboard is exactly, or damn near exactly, the same as the MacBook. You know, it's got those little chiclet keys and. And, of course, they're remapped, and if you look close, there's no function keys, there's no caps lock key, there's no, uh, uh, there's no Windows key, there's no uh, key between the Apple key and the, and the control key. <laughs> I don't know what to say. There's only two keys to the left of the sidebar instead of three, but uh, one's alt, one's control. Don't know what's missing, but anyway, it's pretty slick. And And what I like about it the best is... You know, first day I had it, you know, I signed in with my Google account, and then boom, all my Google stuff's there. I put the uh, the LastPass plugin in, and I put the uh, uh, XMarks plugin in, and boom, the the browser is right there. And that's all the OS is is basically the Chrome browser, and you really can't close it out. It's it, like I said, it's interesting, it's different. But what was great about it is I logged out. I logged in using uh, Kathy's Google account because I happen to know her password and got her all set up to where all she had. And then I just handed it to her and she sat there and did everything that she normally does. Now she doesn't check her email uh, from her laptop. This is, you know, talking from the easy chair. She checks her email on her desktop computer, which she's got uh, Apple mail set up and, but, you know, when she's sitting in the easy chair, she, uh, you know, basically plays flash games on Facebook and and uh, communicates with people on Facebook. And that's really all she does. And and that's it does that excellently. It was better than her uh, Windows 98. No, not Windows 98. Windows XP machine. That seems like 98. <laughs> so... But anyway, like I said, the the Chrome OS is an interesting experience, and very happy to to uh, get another piece of hardware for free. And uh, like I said, I'll have a full review uh, over at geekofthenorth.com as a podcast, and uh, probably over at uh, geeknewscentral.com. Of course, a couple of the other editors over there have uh, received the CR48, so I'll have to read what they wrote and uh, write something different that's uh, accurate but uh, but different <laughs> so and to add to my busy stuff i uh, took over a, a twitter account 
by our, our parent company, Raw Voice. Uh, this one is at Podcaster. It's at P O D C A S T E R. And that's the uh, Twitter account for podcastfaq.com. And in case you haven't ever been over there uh, and you're interested in how to podcast or or how podcasting works and all that good stuff, uh, we got lots of good information over there and, and we're definitely updating that from time to time. But anyway, uh, I'm, the, I'm the one that uh, is now uh, in charge of at podcaster on Twitter. So check that out. Of course, you can... Check out my personal account at at MG Dell. And uh, like I said, I I don't know. Like I said, I think that gets us all, uh, I keep saying like I said, mm. <laughs> all these uh, verbal crutches here. Anyway, I'm going to play another song. Uh, there's a uh, another artist over on uh, Aerial Publicity or Cyber PR. It's Holly Long. And... Uh, I can't read my writing, so I'm going to actually have to look at the file here to tell you what the name of the song is. Sentimental Reasons. This is by uh, Holly Long. And uh, I don't know, I just thought it sounded pretty good. Inside my skin, I know it was you who wasn't here. Now the room is spinning. Maybe these sentimental reasons keep me singing this song. We're here to love all life long.
Mike Dell's World is a proud member of the Blueberry Network. Find freshly picked podcasts over at www.blubrry.com. That's Blueberry with no ease. And again, that was uh, Holly Long, Sentimental Reasons. And uh, she can be found over at uh, aerialpublicity.net or cyberpr.com. Com or .net, I don't know. Google search it, uh, you'll you'll find her. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I talked about uh, getting a new car. Uh, well, it's not a new one. Uh, as you know, I've been driving the uh, the 1998 Toyota Camry, and uh, it's reached 100 and or 215 thousand miles. And my uncle had a uh, 2000 uh, Toyota Camry Solera and what the Solera is is a, a two-door version of the Camry kind of I don't know kind of equivalent to the Accord Coupe and the Hondas uh, this is the Camry Coupe but th- they don't call it that they call it a Camry Solera it's not the convertible one but you can get it as a convertible this one's a, a hard top coupe and uh, when I say hard top, what I mean by that is there's no uh, frame around the window on the doors. That's how you tell a hard top. Well, actually, that's not truly how you tell a hard top, but nowadays that is. But anyway, it's it's basically a, a sporty version of the uh, Toyota Camry, and it's only it's only a couple years newer than than my Camry. And uh, of course, it's in way better shape and has about half the miles on it, so it's just over a hundred thousand. So hopefully, I can uh, stretch this car out for another three or four or five, six years, whatever. And uh, <laughs> that's the way I like it. Uh, got a real good deal on it. Uh, my uncle, like I said, bought a new truck and uh, or new to him truck, and and uh, just happened that. Uh, I was at the right place at the right time and uh, and picked it up for a good price. It's a, it's a nice looking vehicle. I, I'll I'll post pictures over at mikedell.com uh, as soon as it quits snowing here sometime in uh, in middle April. I'm guessing by <laughs> by the pace of things uh, this year, uh, we're getting kind of dumped on. And the old Camry is not going to waste. I'm uh, passing that on to my niece and her husband. Of course, this will be the second car we gave them. Uh, the first one's still running too, but uh, hey, what the heck? Uh, they can use it. Uh, we don't necessarily need any money out of it. I was kind of surprised. Uh, Kelly Blue Book, you know, KBB.com, told me that my uh, 215,000 mile Camry in fair condition, uh, with all the options that I have, was worth $2,500. Of course, my sister, who uh, works as a loan officer at a credit union, uh, blue books things all the time, you know, as far as loan value and whatever. And and she she says they're on puppy chow. That's worth uh, you know we we'd loan we would loan fifteen hundred on it. And I told her she's on puppy chow because I wouldn't pay five hundred for it if I was in the market to buy a car. <laughs> so anyway, uh, my uh, niece's husband. Is uh, going to get good use out of it. He's uh, commuting between Muskegon and uh, and uh, what the heck, somewhere near Lansing. Anyway, he's going to school. He's got one more uh, one more year, two more semesters, and uh, hopefully the old uh, the old Camry will uh, run up and down 96 Interstate 96 uh, enough times to uh, make that trip a lot uh, a lot cheaper than. Uh, than it would have been had he uh, fixed up the old Jeep he was working on. He's still probably going to fix up the old Jeep, but at least he won't have to drive a 15-mile-per-gallon uh, vehicle up and down the interstate uh, to go to school. So so we'll be delivering that on our way to uh, Detroit on Friday, or uh, Novi. And uh, that'll that'll be nice. Get to get that out of the yard. I I still got a, the the amazing thing about that Camry is I've had that uh, that car for oh going on six years, maybe seven years. I don't know. But my mom bought it new in 1998, 
but it had all kinds. I had my ham radio stuff in it. I had a XM radio in it. I had all these the wires going this way and that way and antennas and all this crap. And, and uh, I spent yesterday morning, you know, in the snow. It's, it's like I said, did I tell you it's snowing here? Got lake effect going on still. And lake effect usually only lasts into mid January. So I don't know why it's still going, but it's still going and it's downright cold. But, Anyway, spent all that time out in the snow t- uh, removing the antennas and and uh, pulling wires and took out the XM radio, took out the ham radio, all that. And I'm still not done with everything. Uh, hopefully it'll quit snowing. I can blow the driveway out, uh, sweep off the car, get that into the garage, and uh, finish removing all the wires so that uh, on Friday I can drive it south and uh, and pass it on. Speaking of which, I need to go find the title. Otherwise, uh, f- uh, Thursday morning, I'm going to have to go <laughs> go to the Secretary of State's office, which is our local Department of Motor Vehicles. They call it the Secretary of State's office in Michigan. Had a little conversation with somebody from Ohio, and they thought that was weird. But anyway, got to go to the uh, DMV get the uh, get a title if I don't. Uh, don't have one handy, but I I do believe I have the title handy someplace. Hmm. Anyway, so it'll be good to uh, to get that out of the yard. And like I said, the new car is it's nice. You know, it's pretty much a, a two door version of what I had. It's got uh, leather seats. The only two things it doesn't have that I'm kind of disappointed that the old one did is it doesn't have keyless entry. So I gotta actually use a, a key in the door. And it doesn't have any lock brakes, which hey, I can live without, uh, to be honest with you. The anti-lock brakes never impressed me a lot in cars. You know, on airplanes, it's kind of handy. They, they don't call it anti-lock. They call it uh, anti-skid. And, uh, you know, when you touch down at 150 miles an hour, uh, it's a pretty good uh, thing that you don't skid. But, uh, you know, me putzing around town, the anti-lock would come on at uh, 20 miles an hour, and you feel like you don't have any braking power at all. You know, with the manual, no, not manual, there's still power brakes, but uh, manual, uh, no no anti-lock, uh, I haven't had any problems. And, you know, and I've been driving the thing for a week now, uh, you know, and we've got uh, crappy roads around here, so... You know, I, I definitely would have utilized the uh, anti-lock in the Camry, but the Solera does all right. And uh, like I said, it's got less miles. It's a little fancier uh, overall. It's got a better stereo system. I think it's got six speakers instead of four. <laughs> like I said, I, I'm not quite up there with uh, Brian Cooley and those guys over at CNET. I, I'm, I'm totally... Uh, uh, Totally happy with the uh, more rudimentary cars. In fact, uh, I think if I ever get a uh, project car again, I think I'm going to go with a Model T. Or maybe a Model A. I don't know. I don't know much about the Model A. I I know way too much about the Model T because it, uh, I don't know, just struck my fancy one time and and, uh, did a lot of uh, research and, of course, watched... uh, Jay Leno's garage, uh, where he's got a, uh, a drive in the Model T, and then of course down at Greenfield Village in Detroit, they've got a fleet of Model Ts still that you can take rides in. Of course, not this time of year. Hopefully, we'll get back down there sometime this uh, next summer and and uh, go check that out. But yeah, I'm thinking an old Model T would just be really cool for a uh, project car for you know for summer. And, you know, you go out, thing goes 35, maybe 40 miles an hour. If you got the two-speed rear end, it'll go a little faster. Uh, gets crappy gas mileage, but uh, is is dead simple to, to operate. And I don't know. I just think it'd be kind of cool. And and then they're, they're, they're really reliable. Even, you know, 100 years later, I mean, you know, the first Model Ts, I think, were in 1908. Eh, I might have that wrong, but, uh, you know, there's... There's hundred-year-old examples of these cars still on the road that that, that haven't necessarily been restored. You know, they've been maintained, but maybe not restored. Of course, a little bit of trivia. Do you know that the you know what uh, the newest Model T, the the last Model T to come off uh, or come out of Ford, 
uh, company? No, uh, it isn't what you're thinking. I, I, 1927 or 28, I think, was the official end of production. I want to say, yeah, 27 or 28, because I, I know the 29s were Model A's. Uh, there might be a 29 Model T. I don't know. Uh, I have to look at that. I, I should know that, shouldn't I? But uh, the actual last four vehicles uh, of the Model T line were completed in 2003 when uh, they were remodeling the uh, Rouge plant down there in uh, Dearborn, uh, you know, kind of near Detroit. Uh, Dearborn was kind of Ford's company town back in the day. And uh, anyway, at the R River Rouge plant in Dearborn, they had all these uh, parts uh, from uh, from Model Ts, and they had enough to build, I believe, four cars. I, I could be totally mistaken, but I believe there's th they built four cars in 2003. Uh, they completed them. They were, of course, you know, the parts were all built back in, you know, the 20s. But uh, anyway, they built those four cars. One of them's at uh, Greenfield Village at the Henry Ford Museum. And I believe two of the other ones went to other museums, and then uh, one of them went to the Greenfield Village uh, Model T fleet. But I can't verify that. I, I, I At some point, I want to ask uh, somebody that might know. I do have an email address for the Ford historian, so I don't know. Who, who knows? Maybe I'll... Uh, get to uh, ask that question at some time but anyway how did i get from toyotas to fords hmm anyway i wonder if there was a toyota in 1929 <laughs> or 27 and by the way the uh, the ultimate model t for me would be a 1925 roadster with the ruxall two-speed rear end option and the mountain brake option so anyway you know of anybody that wants to uh, give me one of those, uh, <laughs> I'd be happy to talk to them. So anyway, rather than uh, drag this on and on, uh, let's see, a little over 32 minutes. Hey, be sure to check out the uh, What's Up With That, number uh, 56, I believe, that I just put out just before starting recording this. So uh, it'll be a new, uh, new show from me and uh, Jim. Uh, Jim Farley from uh, musicalworld.us. Go check him out. And uh, like I said, be sure to check out my sponsors, uh, Leonard Peekoff's podcast over at uh, peekoff.com. That's P, what is it? P E I K O F F.com. Also, uh, go check out the other offers I have there on the sidebar of mikedell.com. It keeps the, uh, well, helps keep the lights on here at Mike Dell's World. And, uh, hey, we'll catch you later, and you can catch me later. And, uh, oh, yeah, I can't find the porky pig thing, so that's all, folks. <laughs>